I'm with Brian Perez, head athletic trainer with Towson Sports Medicine. Brian, we hear a lot about heat exhaustion. What is heat exhaustion? Heat exhaustion is probably farther on the spectrum of heat-related injury that you're going to see. Heat exhaustion is a, a medical emergency. That is, in, when we're dealing with things as certified athletic trainers, that is a all-hands-on-deck type of thing where an athlete is in a, in a state of exhaustion because their body temperature is raised far beyond the normal level of, let's say, 98.6. In uh, a level of heat exhaustion, we're looking at core temperatures above 104 degrees. So uh, some signs and symptoms of this may be um, potentially loss of consciousness, seizure, just some, some general malaise where it starts as an athlete maybe not feeling right or maybe not acting right, looking maybe a little slow or a little lackadaisical, and things can go down downhill pretty quick with this. So that is a medical emergency. It is something to be uh, fairly mindful of. How do you avoid heat exhaustion or not getting to that extent? How does an athlete avoid that? Well, the state has done a great job in, in developing guidelines for what's called acclimatization, which means that as we're, as the, our sports and our fall sports are getting started, we are mandated to do a two-week period of a gradual buildup in the terms of amount of time we're practicing. If we're playing sports such as football that are equipment intensive, we are gradually building the amount of, of practices we have in equipment. So let's say the first two or three days we're just in helmets and then we're going to add our shoulder pads and then add pads. It gives your body a chance to acclimatize to not only the weather but also being active again in this heat to prepare yourself for, let's say, the upcoming season. Uh, another thing we can do to, to be um, to prevent this would be hydration. So just being mindful of what you're putting in your body, but also what's going out of your body throughout exercise. So we're talking about drinking water, but also talking about a sports strength, which is going to address the amount of sodium that's been depleted. Sodium is salt. So when you sweat, you get rid of salt. Water will not put salt back in. So that's why something like a sports drink or maybe eating a little bit more salty food post-activity will help you better acclimatize yourself and also prepare yourself for continuous activity day after day after day. And if you feel that some of this lightheadedness, if you're a student athlete or not just feeling right, what should you do? If you have a certified athletic trainer at your school, you must tell them. Say, hey, raise your hand and say, I'm not feeling right. If, there's, if a person like myself is not there, your coach, your athletic director, someone should know because if this is a situation where something needs to be dealt with, you need to address it. Don't try and just say, I'll, get, I'll be better the next sprint or I'll be better tomorrow at practice. If you're not feeling right, just speak up. The biggest thing we try and tell our athletes and also our parents, be mindful, be aware of the situation, and if something's not right, step in or raise your hand anything they can do before practice is it you know you hear should you start hydrating 24 or 36 hours prior hydration is really kind of a never-ending saga here i think before bed if practice in the morning before bed make sure you're drinking before bed have a nice balanced dinner make sure you're drinking throughout the evening when you wake up one hour two hours before practice make sure you're hydrating. What we like to tell people within one hour you should have 20 ounces of water and during activity you should have 10 to 12 ounces of water every 15 minutes. Students, athletes love the Red Bulls, the caffeinated drinks. What do you think of those? No, no, no. For, in, for an athlete, I think that it is, it is a very dangerous situation to be ingesting an energy drink because what that does, it has very high levels of caffeine. So what that caffeine does, it jacks your heart rate way up and then you also crash. What caffeine also does, it's a diuretic. It makes you dehydrated. So all the things we're trying to prevent, you are putting in your body by taking an energy drink. An energy drink is not a sports drink. Uh, there's a time and a place, and prior to athletic activity is not the place. Thank you very much. Thank you.